Consumer confidence is such an important part of a healthy economy. Why? Because the higher the level of confidence, the more likely somebody is to go and spend their hard-earned money and in turn the businesses would reap the benefits. They would be able to hire new employees or pay existing salary and wages. So when the University of Michigan came out with their consumer sentiment index, the numbers for October do not look pretty. So what I thought we would do in this video is get a history of what this index is all about, how it came to be, and what they're looking to get out of the surveys that they complete. And then in turn, we'll look at this most latest report and get an understanding as to why consumer confidence is on the downtrend. And then what we'll do at the end is we'll compare the consumer sentiment index to the S&P 500. But if this is your first time here, my name's Nick. Welcome to Ways to Wealth. Before we get into the video, huge favor, huge ask. If you learn something new or you get some value out of the video, hit that like button for me. I would definitely appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button and turning the notification bell on. With that being said, let's take a look at the history and the understanding of what this is all about. So the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index is an index that's published monthly and it is normalized to have a value of 100. So it'll either be between 0 and 100. And the way that they get this data is by doing 500 telephone interviews that are that are conducted by the university. So how did this come to be? It was devised in the late 1940s by Professor George Katona, and it's basically been going ever since. So it's uh, an indication of how the consumer is feeling about the current economic status. So let's get an understanding of the objectives. So they want to assess near time consumer attitudes on the business climate, their personal finance and spending habits and to promote an understanding and to forecast changes in the national economy. And this is doing so by uh, providing and incorporating empirical measures of consumer expectations into models of spending and saving behavior. So they take that data, throw it into their models and see what it looks like for you know the short term out and they gauge these economic expectations and probable future spending behavior of the consumer retail um, you know using these numbers to see what the next couple months might be like the, the consumer's level of optimism or pessimism so what they do is uh, they look at three things how they view three things their own financial situation the short-term general economy, and also the long-term general economy. So basically, in a nutshell, they're calling 500 people, 50 questions they ask to get an understanding of how things are looking at home. And in turn, this gives them an indication of what the next couple months may look like for the economy in general. And we know that the stock market and companies, based on the reports and earnings, these two should be somewhat correlated. So the next, uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the latest report directly on the Michigan website right here and to get an indication of what they're seeing in the marketplace right now. So consumer sentiment has remained low for the past three months and at lows first recorded in response to the last year's shutdown of the economy. So we're back down to the lows that we saw back in 2020 when everybody was panicking three top reasons uh, why things are looking a little rough right now obviously delta supply chain shortages and reduced labor force participation the job openings are there we've discussed that in previous videos but the employment rate still trends a little bit high so people are a little bit cautious right now as to what the next couple months look like so um, moving on, there is another important factor in which they've kind of highlighted here and let's read and find out what it is. So the other less tangible factor that has contributed to the slump in optimism is the confidence in government economic policies, and that has severely declined in the past six months. 
So we're talking about the Biden plan for infrastructure, the $3.5 trillion plan that has kind of hit a log jam is the word that they use here, but it's a stalemate. No, nothing is really looking to get passed and people are starting to get worried. So consumers in the past were more attentive to the debates about extending the debt ceiling or passing major spending programs. You know, the, the past videos that we talked about that was most likely not going to be an issue. Well, they're not concerned about that anymore. The, what the conversations they're having with people right now is that they are not certain about Biden's current plan and just basically the magnitude and how long, uh, depending on what level of number it is, is it going to take to get into place? How quickly can they pass it and get it going? So when asked about their con uh, confidence in economic policies, favorable evaluations fell to 19% in early October from Biden's honeymoon of 31% in April. Unfavorable policy evaluations rose to 48% in early October uh, from 32% in April. The decline in confidence in economic policies were recorded across all age, income, and education subgroups and across all three political views, even though we know there's more, but Democrats, independents, and Republicans. So it seems that this is starting to become a huge concern for people. We printed out so much money in the past 16 months or whatever that time frame is. They're already looking at adding $3.5 trillion to the Federal Reserve's bank sheet. And uh, they're concerned about how long this is going to take to um, basically roll out. So with that being said, we understand that the number is low. Let's take a look at where it trends over the history. So what I have here is I have the past uh, from the beginning. Uh, we have a max chart right here. So you see starting in the late 40s there all the way up to today. And we can see that this number hasn't really been trending since obviously that par portion in 2020 that's located right here. And then we kind of have the dips that go around. But what you can see is after that 2020, we started to see a pickup in consumer confidence. And those numbers were absolutely fantastic. And I think they were reflected in terms of the supply chain constraints that we're having right now. Obviously, people are buying more things. That confidence is good. But what do the next three months look like? What does the next month look like? It looks like, you know, people aren't spending as much as they did when the money was so prevalent last year. We'll take a, a closer look. We can see here, this is a five-year chart. Numbers were very strong, and I think that was reflected in the stock market at that point. But since that 2020, um, uh, you know, issue that we surrounded, it's kind of been rocking and rolling, which is to be expected, to be honest with you. Um, but what we'll do next is I've, I've put on this website a comparison between U.S. customer sentiment using this University of Michigan. And we're going to take a look and see if we see any correlation between the confidence dipping and the S&P 500 dipping. So if we take a look here, this is the max chart, and it basically goes back to just before 2000. And we can't really see too much of a, there's a couple patterns here where you have the, the U.S. consumer uh, sentiment there in blue and the stock market in black. We see little dips here, but there's not too much over the long run there. But what we'll do is we'll take a look at a 10-year chart. And here's where we can start to see some similarities or correlations in both of these uh, two different aspects. So um, we see consumer sentiment dropping here, and these are just little ripples, but you can kind of see dripping, dripping. And, uh, you know, the big one there was back in 2020, and we see the ma major fall off, followed by the increase in consumer index, and then obviously the increase of the S&P 500. Let's knock this down to a year. And what we can see right now developing in the short run is such a big divergence between where the stock market's at and where the consumer um, index is. Now, I'm not saying that these two follow each other. I'm not saying that there's a pattern here. I'm not saying that, you know, the economy is going to crash and crawl. 
But there is some caution that I have for retailers, especially when you consider the supply chain issue that's going on. And also, um, you know, all the stuff that's kind of coming in for Christmas. Is it going to hit shelves? Are people not going to buy as much if the product isn't available? We've seen major retailers, the Nikes, the Apples of the world allude to, hey, our future earnings may be impacted. So right now I'm kind of taking a, a step back on retailers or looking to add retailers into the portfolio. But let me know what you think. Do you use this, you know, uh, macroeconomic factors to determine where the economy is going to be? Or are you using some other type of metric to get an indication of where we're at right now and where we're going in the future? But I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate your support. If you enjoyed it, you're still here with me. Hit that like button. And uh, if, you, if you're still here, hit that subscribe button. I hope you all have a great week in the markets. Happy trading.